So, Aaron, what do you think of the Farm for Profit podcast? It is the freaking best. I try to be healthy, but I stick with my little tractor oven meals. Tractor oven meals? What are those? There's a whole other podcast. What's a tractor oven? Is there just you like, don't have a tractor oven? I don't have a tractor oven in my <laughs> tractor. Unless you're talking about wrapping something in tin foil and putting it on the exhaust manifold. No, this way you don't lose it going down the field. You just plug it in your cigarette lighter. I'll send you the Amazon link. It's oh wonderful. Best 30 bucks I've ever spent in my life. Thank you for listening to the Farm for Fun podcast, a happy hour spinoff of the Farm for Profit podcast. These episodes are hosted by Tanner Winteroff, the Iowa Bankerman, David Whitaker, the Iowa Land Guy, and a random farmer named Corey. Each episode, they plan to focus on a brewery or distillery while talking about all current events and everything else. Crack a beer, mix a drink, and join on the fun. Remember, if you aren't farming for fun, we know you don't have a tractor oven yet. <laughs> Welcome back to the Mullet of Agriculture podcast. This is Tanner Winterhoff, a banker from Central Iowa. This is Corey Hillebo, a farmer from Central Iowa. And this is David Whitaker, an auctioneer and realtor from Central Iowa. It's like we're all neighbors or something, <laughs> right? No, but uh, thank you all listeners for uh, continuing to like this podcast, rate this podcast, and review it. Uh, we really appreciate the feedback that you've been given. That's why we wanted to introduce ourselves that way. Uh, we heard that sometimes it's a little bit difficult to tell us apart since you can't see us in person. Uh, so wanted to give a little bit of background there too. Corey, what are an example of a couple other reviews that we've been getting lately? Well, I'm just looking at a, a whole list. We've got a bunch, um, especially since we did the derecho episode, um, officially hooked on the podcast. Uh, what a fantastic and timely resource. Um, I had one that's not on here from, uh, I was probably a month back and the guy was like, Hey, your podcast actually made me money. Hey, that goes a long ways. <laughs> That's part of being the Farm for Profit podcast. You had a couple others here. Great information and kudos for uh, making time to quickly create this valuable content. Oh, yeah, David, you thought it was quite funny. Uh, do you guys practice all morning to put this together, or how's this go? Not so much. <laughs> Tanner <laughs> practices a lot I don't because think he so. writes everything for us. So it. he's our content editor. We don't write anything Both on this episode. You bet. Yeah, you guys should have seen us before we came flying in here to set up these mics in this room. I'll try and get a picture out there on social media so everybody can see that too. But we don't want to waste their time. Nobody wants to hear about this part of it. They're all excited to find out what we've got going on today. So what do you think, Corey? Is it about time to get our guest introduced? Yeah, let's introduce her. Give me some music going. A farm girl from West Central Indiana. She's a product of Purdue, which is arguably the best agriculture school in the net in the na in, I can't do that in the Big Ten. <laughs> she her presence on social media is nothing short of impressive. She's an entrepreneur. She started her own clothing company called The Heart of the Midwest. She seems to have a pet raccoon. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Aaron Holbert. Yeah. Welcome, Aaron. Woohoo! <laughs> hey, thanks for having me, guys. Okay, so I got to get the raccoon thing out. It's been all over social media. What's up with it? Is that thing domesticated yet? It is. You know, I figured why be the neighborhood cat lady when you can have raccoons, you know, just <laughs> take it up a notch. So, yeah, I've got Roscoe the raccoon and he lives in the tree in my driveway. Oh, he's in a tree. He doesn't live in the house. Oh, no. <laughs> I want to have some kind of standards. Oh, I got you. But could you like call him in and he could come and be on the podcast? Uh, I don't know where he's at. Oh. He's, he usually explores in the afternoons. That's pretty cool. So how did you come across Roscoe? Roscoe actually was given to me by a family friend. Um, I'd bottle fed a couple of baby raccoons a couple years ago. And so they knew that I had experience and they had bottle fed this one. Um, but their neighbor, they live in a subdivision. Their neighbor wasn't a fan of Roscoe running around. Um, <laughs> so he came to live with me out here in BFE and be a raccoon. So... When my wife tunes into this episode, she's going to immediately fall in love with you because her and her mom, well, she grew up right on the edge of a highway and two of the trees had a hollowed out trunk and uh, very frequently would the mother figure of these raccoons um, end up underneath some rubber wheels and uh, they took care of lots of, what do you call them? Are they called litters of raccoons? What do you call 
babies. I think so. We're I'm gonna, not quite sure. We're going to go with litters. I think it's a litter because I yeah. think a mom reckon is a sow. So my wife, Allie, and her <laughs> mom have raised a bunch of, of litters themselves. They had a, a little cage in the garage, and they'd bottle feed and get everything together, bring them in the house. So, uh, yeah, I think you've got There's an instant that. fan. Oh, Yeah. So, Aaron, besides the raccoon, why don't you uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, you know, obviously went to Purdue, and I threw a little jab at you there, but, uh, you know, how did you get to where you are today? Yeah, so after Purdue, I actually came back. Um, I had had an internship with Cargill as a farm marketer and didn't quite love that, but they wanted to hire me, so I decided to go the agronomist route and moved up to Michigan um, wasn't up there too long before I came back to Indiana um, to work as a DSM for a regional seed company. And after a couple, three years of that, you know, it gets a little old. And I got tired of my neighbors avoiding me in the restaurant. Um, so no one wants to sit with a salesperson, <laughs> even if I did buy their lunch. So um, I came back to the family farm to work for my dad. Gotcha. And what was your major when you were at Purdue? I was ag business and crop science. Okay. A lot of what you say there, it kind of sounds like what I did. I went to Iowa State, um, went and worked in the industry, did a couple different jobs, and now I'm back at the family farm. I'm still in the seed industry. Um, and people still that, don't want to eat lunch with you. People, people still, still don't, don't want to eat, eat lunch. lunch. They don't want to buy seed from me, and they avoid my calls. <laughs> Okay, you went to Iowa State. So did you have Bob Hartzler yeah, by chance? I did. I did. He's my cousin. He's your cousin? That's like a, my one claim to fame. Wow, that's a small industry. world. So I had him and yeah. Megan Anderson out on, uh, on uh, one of my soybean farms this year because we had a little bit of dicamba damage. Okay. So they were looking at that. But they've been busy yeah. this year with all the crap yes, that's been have. happening with uh, dicamba and drought and now the derecho over here. So it's, uh, they've been busy. So earning their paycheck. Yeah. But. Very cool. Small world. Not didn't know there was going to be a connection on this podcast. No, that is cool. So as I get ready to open this up, the first beer looks like we got black is beautiful. Black is beautiful. So this, there's going to be a little bit of a tie here. This is from Alluvial Brewery. So, oh, I like that. I yeah. can hear Aaron's too. <laughs> this, this is the first time that we have sent a local Central Iowa beer out to our guests. So we actually UPS some beer out to Aaron, so she can taste exactly what we're tasting too. So this is a beer from Alluvial Brewery. They are in Ames, Iowa. They're on the north side of Ames in Franklin Township. Uh, they focus on making craft beers dedicated to quality and taste celebrating community and their unique piece of Iowa. So that's what we're going to do first. So here, while I go ahead and uh, get this poured, Aaron, we had done an episode on derecho. Did uh, did that get anywhere close to you, that storm? No, um, we got pretty lucky um, with that. You know, we've, we've been praying for you guys. It's been awful seeing um, all the damage that actually went down. Yeah, it's pretty devastating. I sent, uh, or I spent the afternoon with our crop insurance adjuster yesterday, like all afternoon, looked at every field, and it just makes you sick. But uh, yeah, that's what your, insurance your is for. Your tweet this morning, that really got us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Luckily, that's, we got like three or 400 acres of that, and the rest of it is just tangled up. Um, but we have to try to go get it. So, right. Um, that kind of sucks. But Dave, Dave, what are we uh, drinking here? So like uh, Tanner said, North Ames, black is beautiful is what we're drinking. The can it kind of has a black brown feel to it. Uh, looks looks pretty neat, almost like uh, Roblox if you got kids that uh, do that. But uh, it's a 9% imperial stout brewed with coffee. That's what gives it the black is uh, beautiful side. Rich, full bodied with rich, roasty coffee notes to it. You guys take a uh, take a taste of this and I'm, tell I'm me. I'm smelling it. It smells like I'm walking into a, a coffee shop next to it. It really brewery. does. Does it have it a touch does. of smokiness <laughs> to it? Let's drink it. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is dark and thick. Woo! There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's thick. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> that's coffee straight up. Okay, so Dave, what are you? You're picking out the coffee tones pretty For quick. For sure. It even has a, a coffee dryness aftertaste to it. It does. Yeah, the bitterness and yeah. So is it okay for me to drink this in the morning? It's beer and coffee mixed together. I think <laughs> that's good. That's Eric's chocolate. 
That's so, the best coffee. part about this. You don't like coffee? Is that what you said? I don't. Well, that would be hard to like this I'm beer. Lie. I'm not a huge beer person either. So if you combine <laughs> them, it's just a... It just doesn't <laughs> work. Well, it's a good thing we did this one first and got it out of the way for you. But I, I think when I poured this, it looked to me like it was pouring out like used motor oil. Yeah. Yeah, it looked like it. But if you if you are a stout fan, so my loan assistant is a stout fan yeah. and and also enjoys coffee, I think that I could get her a six pack of this for her birthday and she'd be super happy with me. I don't mind it, but oh, give yeah. me like a an espresso shot of it. Let's, That's true. Yeah. I so have the, friends who would just love this, but well, I'm better, not one of those people. You better invite them over. You've got a can of it sitting there. Yeah. I know. (laughs) So, Aaron, the first time when I added you to Twitter was when I saw a picture of you in the tractor cab with a laptop. Could you expand to our listeners maybe what you would have been doing in that picture? Yeah. So last fall, that that picture um, actually was starting my business. I had this idea for shirts and I finally got them made, never expecting them to take off like at all. And then all of a sudden it just blew up and I was like, Oh crap, like I have to make this legal. And so I built a website and did all of that from the cab of the 8420 running the auger cart. Um, What's an auger cart? (laughs) Oh, come on. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. The grain cart. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So I just took my Wi-Fi router. I've got like a handy dandy little outlet thingy that plugs into the cigarette lighter. And with that, I pretty much could just work on it in between bean rounds. So did you design the apparel that you sell on that website yourself? I did. That was, that was also a learning experience. I never used Photoshop before I downloaded it to make those designs. Lots of YouTube videos. So we need someone to design us a Mullet of Ag podcast t-shirt. We may have to sign you up to do this. I've already got an idea for you. I'll I already have no an idea. All right. Like Let's go. So on a, on a previous uh, podcast with a, uh, another lady, uh, the Woody Farmer that, that makes some t-shirts, she was talking about uh, copywriting. Do Tra- you, trademark. You, trademark. Yeah, yeah, trademark. Sorry. Yep. Not a lawyer. Um, <laughs> Just play one on TV. <laughs> yeah. I'm a, yeah. Uh, have you done or dealt with any of that? Uh, I have dealt with it. I have not done it. Um, little naive me when I started it, I never imagined someone stealing my design because who does that? Like, that's just rude. There's a lot of bad people. In this yeah. World. So within a month, um, of me making them, I had someone on Facebook selling them. Um, but she took them down after a nice, uh, message I sent her. <laughs> The best form of flattery is imitation. Is that what that, is yeah, that how that goes? Some, something like that yes. for sure. Yep. Have you done any of those Facebook campaigns? Like I see a, a clever or risque t-shirt come over on a Facebook ad that makes you laugh. And then there's like 20,000 comments under it or something yep. like that. I'm like, man, they got to be selling the crap out of t-shirts. Yeah. I haven't really done any like promoted ads yet. Um, yeah. I've been plenty busy just from, Twitter and Instagram. So, yeah. I don't know about you guys. Do you still taste coffee? I still, I still, still have coffee in my <laughs> I still, mouth. It's... I still got it. Before we dive into the next one, uh, Aaron, do you like watching movies? Um, it depends. I don't quite have a great attention span, so it better hook me in pretty fast. Do you like watching wildlife? Yes. You like raccoons. All right. What? I should have known. Yeah, that was a dumb question, wasn't it? <laughs> so the Alluvial Brewery that we're tasting today is partnering with a 5013C, Prairie Rivers of Iowa. So a nonprofit, and they're putting together a film festival kickoff event on September 11th. Now, the September 11th date is for an in-person in Ames, Iowa event. But what they're doing is selling tickets for a virtual film festival that will take place starting October 2nd. And the virtual film festival is the Wild and Scenic Festival. It inspires environmental awareness, love for nature through film and unique unique creations. So that might be something that would work for you, Erin. Oh, yeah. That sounds something I could totally get behind. They can also put together, uh, take entries between now and then, too. So maybe you got to take a film of Roscoe playing around and submit that. <laughs> I did just upload a YouTube video yesterday about Roscoe. That's awesome. So the to finish this out, Prairie Rivers of Iowa helps Iowans create a stronger and healthier state. Their nonprofit is headquartered in Ames, 
to find more information about them and to sign up for this uh, preview party on September 11th and then the film festival on October 2nd. It's www.prrcd.org. And as Dave and I were trying to describe this earlier, how would you say that? Uh, the, the per CD, like PRR, like yeah. her raccoon, probably purrs like a kitten, per CD. <laughs> so www.prrcd.org. So the film festival, their goal is to educate the public about conservation and wildlife. It's a fundraiser, hence the ticket price on getting signed up to do this. And then due to uh, coronavirus and COVID-19, it's virtual. So you can watch it from anywhere, even in the middle of Indiana. So uh, what a fantastic event. This will be really cool www.prrcd.org to find out more information about this. While I get the next one opened up, uh, what do you got going on, Corey? Aaron, you mentioned your YouTube channel. I saw that you just got that going. Has that, uh, how's that been? Yeah, it's been good. Um, honestly, the, I've kind of gotten a lot of hate on Twitter recently, so I was kind of hesitant about starting a YouTube channel, but so far everyone has been super supportive um, and wonderful. And so far it's been pretty good. So I did, I did have the hate on Twitter wrote down here. What the <laughs> hell is up with that? What, what, like I said, pe- there's a lot of bad people in this world, but are people just jealous or how, how do you view it? No, because like, as my dad reminds me constantly, I don't know why anyone follows you and I don't either. <laughs> um, like I said, I'm pretty boring. Like, I mean, how could you be jealous of someone who lives in an old farmhouse with a raccoon and a wild, like a crazy dog? Like, I don't, I don't really see like what they would have to be jealous about, but. So oh well. what do you think the most common um, gripe is that people are you know pissed off at you about? <laughs> um, that's nice. But <laughs> late, lately it seems to be more along the lines of, oh, you don't actually do any work. You just take selfies in the tractors and post them on social media. What's that matter? Um, even, if, would... even if you did do that, why does that matter? Right? I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't mind if that was my life, but man, my dad does not let that happen. It, it does seem like you take some showers in uh, talc and graphite quite a bit. And I, I like the people, I don't like the people that say that, but it's funny watching them. You just pour that all over yourself and, you know, comment no. on that. It's like, okay, I've, I've done that before and I get, it go, gets everywhere. It, okay. I just think that it's like graphite sticks to people. And I'm one of those unlucky people that it just sticks to. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's funny. And yeah, you were on the, uh, ag of the world, right? A couple weeks ago. And yes. there was some hate on there even too. I'm like, geez, people just let yeah, it. Yeah, I I felt really bad. Um, Cheyenne had asked me to host that, and after the first day, I woke up the next morning and to all the hate that I had gotten, and I pretty much just didn't do anything on it the rest of the week, just because I was over it at that point. I'm. Yeah. Well, that's too bad because that account is is meant to really showcase agriculture and people who are doing some really cool stuff. Yeah, I had been really excited about it, but maybe another time it will work out better. Yeah. So, Aaron, we're going to go to the second beer here, but while we do that, uh, Corey mentioned you had a YouTube channel, you're on Twitter. Uh, are you are you on TikTok yet? I am on TikTok. You are. Are you get, getting any fans there and, and growing a following there? Yeah, I've got a pretty decent following there. Um, it seems to mainly be middle-aged to older men with um issues <laughs> okay i'm so, gonna go unfollow her well right tanner now. tell us Wait, about the second beer you, <laughs> tell us about how, beer how, two. how old is middle age yeah, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. we gotta get Corey cleared up here to find <laughs> out I mean, i'm closing in on 30 so i would say middle age would be like 50 and above okay oh, you're okay. good yeah 50 right <laughs> TikTok is addicting. I, I spend way too much time out there, but uh, it's also fun to create. It is. It is a lot of fun. So uh, I think it was a couple months ago. I think I saw you were talking about maybe some DMs, uh, <laughs> uh, some just, and you mentioned the weirdos on yes. TikTok and all that. I mean, I'm sure you're getting just bombarded with that kind of stuff. Is, is that how that works? Uh, yes, I pretty much do not even look at my DMs anymore, which makes me feel bad for, you know, some of the high school girls and folks that message me or people who are genuinely um, 
wanting to get to know me better. Like, but like, like me, so, it took so that's forever why. to connect with you on a. <laughs> yeah, I'm really sorry about that. Every <laughs> once in a while, I'll scroll through and I'm like, oh, wait, I actually know these people. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. Okay. So, do you have your Ruby, Ruble strawberry opened up? I do. All right, guys, let's give the Ruble strawberry a taste. This is a sour, right? It almost smells like a wine. Yeah. Holy cow, I actually like this. Woo! We got one. We chalk one up for her. There you go, Aaron. Yeah, it's got a little, I mean, it's got oh, a little different. bit of a red. That tint, is a different but sour. It's not pink. It's like beer. Yes. It's another sour. I, yeah. You know, every time I say this about the sours we have, and I say, I'm not a sour fan, but then I like it. So maybe I'm becoming a sour fan. Read the description, Corey. What's this got in it? Or what's it supposed to have in it? Loaded with even more fruit, this one is kettle soured with yogurt with additions of fresh rhubarb and strawberries. You know, now that you mentioned yogurt, Aaron, can you taste the yogurt part of that? It's smooth. Yeah. It tastes like a gogurt. A go gurt. <laughs> is that the tractor snack of choice? Uh, no. I stick with, um, I try to be healthy, but I stick with my little tractor oven meals. Tractor oven meals? What are those? There's a whole other podcast. What's a tractor oven? Is there just you like... You don't have a tractor oven? I don't have a tractor oven in my <laughs> tractor. Unless you're talking about wrapping something in tin foil and putting it on the exhaust manifold. No. This way you don't lose it going down the field. You just... Plug it in your cigarette lighter. I'll send you the Amazon link. It's oh wonderful. Best 30 bucks I've ever spent in my life. All right. So do you have like a the same thing? You can plug in like a cooler or a fridge, like keeps it cold too? Um, No, I just like freeze them and then I use them as an ice pack throughout the day. So they're thawed out and ready to go by supper time. Nice. And that probably eliminates you from eating it early. Exactly. Because <laughs> every time I pack a lunch, it it doesn't work. It's 10 o'clock. It's gone. You know, Tanner oh, yeah. and I did an episode on the best snacks in a tractor. What was it, like top 15 snacks in a tractor? Yep, last fall. Last fall. That was a long, That was back at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. I think what I want to do, Aaron, what do you think about this? Should we try and get our wives in studio to do a podcast without us? Yes. And I was thinking that maybe we should throw like gift ideas. The hardest person to shop for is a farmer. Maybe we should have them come in and talk about gift ideas and your cigarette lighter tractor oven might be top of the list. It is the freaking best. Awesome. They're like 30 bucks. Maybe we should just get a few and give them away. Put, put it. Yeah. Can you order those with a farm for profit farm for or a fun farm for or... fun? Yeah. Farm for fun sticker on those. Yeah. Oh yeah. It just looks like a little tackle box. They just slap that sticker right on there. Nice. <laughs> Look at that, guys. Well, they're, they're doing something every day. So, so you like this one, Aaron. This is this is better than the first one. I actually do. I'm not going to lie. When you guys sent me beer, I was like, ooh, I'm not going to like any of these. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There's a bonus. Chalk it up. I think we're the only podcast that would ever send anyone beer. So that's right? cool. from that, You guys are the fifth podcast I've been on, and no one has sent me anything. Hey. Oh, right. There we go. Winner, winner. Oh, boy. So, Mullet Podcast, I mean, hashtag oh. Mullet Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, that's clearly going to put us at the top of your list then. Oh, absolutely. Awesome. Uh, I have heard podcasts that you have been on before, and I don't want to rehit all of the same information that everybody else had talked about. But one thing that stuck out for me, which I think Corey can uh, uh, talk, attest to also, is the dynamic of a family farm and the fact mm. that that you and your dad – uh, have to work so closely together. How how can you do best describe that relationship with your dad? Sometimes it's really good, and sometimes it's really tense. Yeah. It's the best and worst thing all at one at the same time. Have you guys <laughs> absolutely? Have you guys figured out what is there a very clear definition of roles? Something that one's really better at than the other one? Oh yeah, he's the boss, and I just do what he tells me to. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm assuming Corey's going to say the opposite. Uh, You're the boss. You tell your dad to do everything. No, not so much. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit more of a gray area there. We both kind of have our strengths and weaknesses, and mine's more of the hard labor. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> my, my, my strength or the weakness is the hard labor. Is that what you're saying? What do they say? The old guys are, you know, long in money and short on labor, and the young guys are short on money and long, long on labor. labor. So, kind of how it is. But 
Have you guys talked about like uh, you got a couple brothers and a sister too? Is am I right there? Yeah, I've got a younger sister and a younger brother. Um, my oh, sister has okay. never really been into the whole ag thing, which is fine. Everyone has their own thing. And then um, my brother is at Purdue right now, um, studying ag systems management, and he has four years in the Marine Corps. He's in the ROTC program, and then after that, he's coming back um, to run the farm take over awesome hmm. so what i i just started following you these guys have been following you for a while what uh, uh what motivates your twitter feed what motivates your agriculture etc cetera, etc cetera? what motivates you um, <laughs> of like my dad saying why would anyone follow you i have no idea when i i started this twitter account um when i worked for that seed company they wanted all of their dsms to have one to just kind of share um information about the company and wasn't super into it and then I don't know why but people started following me and kind of made some friends and had some good opportunities along the way and then probably last summer um, on Instagram I realized there was like a little ad community there too so I started sharing more about the farm and realized that my whole life kind of revolved around agriculture so why not make all of my social media the same way and it kind of just skyrocketed from there. So I'm kind of reading between the lines that you you have almost a passion for education and, and telling the story of agriculture. Yeah, um, I guess I don't really have a lot of followers who come from non-ag, or at least I don't think I do. Um, but I realized at the farm show in Louisville this past February, I had a girl, a high school girl actually come up to me and she was wearing one of my shirts and <laughs> asked to take a picture with me and then I had another girl and another girl and I was like oh crap like all of these high school college age girls are looking up to me <laughs> so since then I've just tried to you know I so I came from a community where women were involved in the farm um the wives daughters moms like they all played a role and it wasn't just the gopher like there were wives in the combines um running the grain cart in the semis and so I didn't realize until like I went to college and left that like women in ag was such a big deal in some places. So just kind of for that girl out there who might not have had those role models growing up. That's such a challenging role. I've got a couple of ag lenders on my team that are female, uh, have a couple of, of strong connections in my networking group to saleswomen uh, in the ag industry and and the amount of of uh, stories that they have to share uh, about the challenges that they face. Uh, but then one of them had a really great perspective to share is sometimes you only see what you're looking for. So if you're looking for discrimination or if you're looking for someone to mistreat you, you will probably find it. So that was kind of really neat for me to, even on the, the prejudices that I've got or feel like that come towards me as, as being a younger ag lender, uh, maybe might have only existed in my head. I'm not saying it doesn't exist, uh, but that oh, was just no. a really cool perspective. I, you know, I didn't think I was anything special until I went to college and everyone was like, oh, you're special because you're a woman in ag. And I came back and my dad was like, you're not special. You're still expected to do the same work as you always did. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. So everything I see that you're doing is is great for ag. So keep it up. I think it's awesome. Thank you. So um, we're going to talk about Doratio at all. Well, we're, I know you guys already did an episode on this. Well, we threw an episode out, and that, that was a really cool thing. And, and Aaron, I don't know if you uh, have a chance to tune into it. It's a really long episode, but we tried to put a lot of perspectives together. A uh, meteorologist, an agronomist, an insurance agent, uh, threw in a couple of guys who had experience with storing grain and other formats besides grain bins, uh, and then someone on mental health. Tried to put like a, a, a recovery kit together for those impacted by the storm. But Corey, we're getting more information after we release this. First of all, I want to thank everybody for sharing this. That episode is literally getting downloaded an average of once every eight minutes. So it, it was definitely needed. And I appreciate Corey for putting the idea in, in our ears and for our audience for sharing that with everybody who needed to get it. Uh, continue to do that. We'd really appreciate if you would help pass that resource around. But what are we learning since then? What are you seeing, Corey? First off, I was really excited to come in here today and like, get my mind away from the direction. <laughs> so and then I bring it up wah, wah. Ta talking about it, but uh, we are learning just a ton. I mean, there's guys rolling down 
crops. Um, some guys can't, some guys can. There's a lot of different stuff that their insurance adjusters are telling them, a lot of different uh, aspects of, you know, different types of insurance. Um, and the grain storage thing is still an issue, but I think there's some things getting worked out there. Um, I think it's enough that we probably need to put out a part two, um, just from what we've learned now. And I don't think it's as a, a big of a rush that we were to get the first one out because the first one was timely. S- yes. It was some major questions that needed to be answered. Now the problem is that we, like my dad and I have talked about is the unknowns going forward, uh, with grain quality and whether we can get it in the combine or not. And, whether it's worth it to try to get it or risk ruining our combine. And it's just, yeah, I have been, I, this is probably one of the emotionally low points of my life. I mean, and it's been an, a roller coaster, but um, doing this helps me just. Do you think it'll think be it. uh, progress though for the agriculture community? I'm already thinking hearing guys that are going to invent a combine head that can actually go underneath, even down corn, pick stuff up. I mean, when we wanted, we had, when we had a race to the moon, we invented uh, Velcro, we invented Tang, we invented cool stuff like that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and so what are we going to invent? Uh, you know, uh, humans overcome any yeah. kind of challenge. Here's the challenge. Now we have a new challenge that nobody's had to overcome anything with a piece of equipment, et cetera. Yeah. And in a way we have some of those things to help us. Um, but like I said, if you could pick it up, great, but is it, is the quality is there? Good? You yep. know? And so that's, that's Molded. probably the hardest thing is the unknowns um, in that aspect. I think like the grain baggers and that kind of stuff, the technology has come a long way for that. That's uh, pretty cool. So yeah, just got a lot more questions to answer. And unfortunately there'll be a lot of questions that won't be answered until we try to take the combine across the field. Well, until the next episode, <laughs> well, it, that's just, it for Duratio. So, Tanner, we better go to beer three. Would you bring us to beer three? Yeah, I can get beer three ready. I'm just noticing, too, Aaron, that the, the weather this year has caused so many different things. I was learning that the wildfire wildfires out in the California region were started from lightning strikes. So the, the weather's wreaking havoc out there. And now we've got Hurricane Laura. I mean, that's kind of giveaway when we actually recorded this is Hurricane Laura is expected to hit the coast of Texas and Louisiana tonight. Yep. And it's been upgraded to a category four, which is now yep. almost the equivalent of the winds that hit Iowa. Category Iowa derecho. Category. <laughs> Hashtag uh, that's lit. Yeah. Well, Wildfires. Today I'm doing a lot better job of opening these beers. If anybody else pays yep. attention and keeps score, this is the first one that shot me in the face. Yes. The other two are successful. <laughs> So this one's a white can. It's got like a, is that a beaver on the front? Yeah. Or is an otter. It, is it an otter? I think it's an otter. Yeah. It's an otter. It's got a little bit of yellow to it. And uh, all these kind of have a, uh, of course, the aluminum colored silver can with a really sweet label on them. Aaron, how has your uh, growing season been? <laughs> kind of like the same as the past couple years. It's been crappy spring um it's starting to get pretty dry we actually could use some of that laura rain if it would get up here um you probably have a better chance of getting that than we do i would imagine because that's going to scoot off east right i hope so according to the dtn weather um outlook it doesn't look as great as it did a couple days ago free ad there for dtn ring the bell dtn she's a (laughs) let's see what i gotta remember that you are a brand ambassador correct I am. All right. Had to get that in there once. <laughs> hey, it's only fair. Yeah. When it's you all... design our new t-shirts and uh, you can endorse and be a brand ambassador for Farm, farm for, for Pro. Or Farm for Fun, <laughs> the, the Mullet of Ag the podcast. The Mullet podcast. <laughs> hey, you guys sent ball, so <laughs> this, I'll do it for free. This one smells like an IPA, Tanner. Oh, mercy. Yeah, this will be definitely David's favorite if it's an IPA. <laughs> <laughs> This is, how do you say it, Tanner? Lutris? I'm going to go with Lutris. Lutris Pale Ale. Let's try it. Let's watch Aaron's face. Oh, no, not, no, no. <laughs> it froze there for a second on it. <laughs> <laughs> this so, massively hopped pale ale combines citra hop and Morris otter malt to create an extremely seasonable pale ale with giant citrus notes. I enjoy it, but I'm an IPA fan, so... Yeah. So this is definitely something that I would go back and order again. It does have, for me, like an orange or a tangerine taste in it. The smell, the smell is very interesting. 
That that's what caught me right away. Yeah. Dave, what's your face? It's okay. It's massively hopped though, like it says. I think I could uh drink this maybe more than the coffee, although I didn't think coffee's too bad if you drink coffee. So <laughs> Right. Right, and re- reminder that these are coming from Alluvial Brewery in Ames. They're located uh, on the north side of Ames, and they're doing this as a favor today for Prairie Rivers of Iowa, a 501c3 nonprofit, also headquartered in Ames, Iowa, www.prrcd.org. And that's where you go to find out the information for the live preview party on September 11th or the virtual film festival on October 2nd. Aaron, not a fan of this one? I'm not. I'm going to stick with the strawberry one. Yeah, that's cool. To each their own. That's why they have a bunch, right? That's, the whole craft brewing, I mean, all the different beers they've come up with. I mean, last week we had a, or a couple weeks ago, we had a cream. Yep. Yeah. I've never had one of those. Well, that's my favorite part. When I time. when I go into one of these places, I'll get the beer that I enjoy. So I would go in and I would get the, I'd order the Lutris, and then I'd order a flight. I'd want to get four different flavors to try, because it seems like they change every time I go in. Hmm. And the color on these is really neat too. You, I've never seen three beers with so such a color, yeah, color palette. So, so Aaron, have you ever been a part of the Pro Farmer Tour, the yield check that goes across? Have you ever been asked to be a part of that? Do you follow? I'm not. Do you follow it on Twitter? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, sometimes there's just so many that you kind of just start scrolling past. Um. But I did watch, I don't know if you guys know Laura Carlson. Yeah. So she had a couple YouTube videos and some stuff on Instagram about it. So I caught that leg of it for sure. We actually got Laura on one of our Farm for Profit episodes where we were talking about okay. um, how she can earn referrals from building a network. So kind of talked to her a little bit about getting that network built up. And then she also promised that she would turn 21-ish on a Farm for Fun show. Yep. But I've got uh, – I printed off the results from that tour. So do you think, Aaron, that your area is better or worse than last year, crops-wise? Um, I honestly have no idea. <laughs> last year we expected it to not be that great, and my dad raised the best beans he ever had in his life. Um, corn was so-so. But I would say – this year, it's going to be kind of the same, um, just kind of expecting that middle of the road, extraordinary. As far as pod count goes on the crop tour, Nebraska and Indiana led the way. Um, <clears throat> a significant amount of pods there. You know, you can't really predict yield very well math-wise, but USDA has you guys both over 60 bushel to the acre on the soybean side. Uh, Pro Farmer Tour for Indiana came back just under 180 uh, USDA has you predicted a little bit higher than that, closer to 190. Uh, but ultimately, the results here, so Iowa came in at 177.8. The USDA had Iowa at 202. So a big a big difference there, and I think a lot of that reason was due to the storm uh, and the severe drought that we've got coming through the state. But uh, you'll see here, Corey, on my chart that everything in gray is uh, the Pro Farmer Tour found lower than what the USDA is projecting. Hmm. So that's every state except for South Dakota, Aaron. Yeah, South Dakota's having a good good year. Um, I actually just talked to a guy from South Dakota today, and he was pretty happy with stuff. And, yeah, Indiana sounds like it's doing pretty good. But if I'm not mistaken, you're from Dana, which is pretty close to Illinois, right? Uh, yeah, actually, the Illinois state line is about less than a quarter of a mile to the west oh, of me. It's okay, so you could kind of go Do you farm? there. Do you farm in both states? Nope. We only farm in like probably like a five mile radius of our actual bar, like main farm um and nothing in illinois yeah very cool so yeah the, i think on the deteriorating crop conditions um that was the big thing this week that came out and yes from the derecho um obviously western iowa and eastern nebraska has been dry for a while but that's starting to creep into Eastern Iowa, Northwest yeah, Iowa. Yeah, it went central and across, but Western yeah. Iowa is in a uh, class two or stage two drought. Yeah, and some of the pictures that are coming out of there is pretty pretty bad. Yeah, the only part of my yard that I have to mow is where the shade from the house casts. Everything yep. else is brown. Yeah, but on one more thing for the drature on that, I would almost rather have a drought the whole right. time and not pump side dress money and. Uh, fungicide money and then see these big old ears just get blown to the ground so 
that's what's hurting us because 75 85 percent of uh APH is not break even this year for for the crop insurance side so that kind of sucks so Aaron uh we're not ready to end the podcast yet but I want to give you as much heads up uh every one of our guests gets asked this question we always want to know what traits are common amongst the most successful farmers that you know so just be thinking about that one in the back of your head uh, but I wanted to also bring up Corey and I had a side conversation the other day uh, as it related to, I can't remember how it started. We were looking at uh, somebody from Minnesota had put a tweet out about taking a bet as to what the average yield for the state of Minnesota was going to be. Yeah, and they were asking for who's taking the over or who's taking the under. Right, and and that kind of led us down a rabbit hole of maybe there should be a betting platform put together for uh, potentially going over unders, uh, putting together some long odds. Uh, what things look like specifically too, but uh, what do you think? I don't know how you could do it. It would just be so much information, but why not? You can bet on who's going to be the president in 2028 or um, who's can, going to win the Super Bowl can in can bet on the years. coin flip. Yeah, I mean, so why not? Let's monetize this thing and get some entertainment going in the ag industry. And hey, who knows with this COVID thing, if we keep not having sports and things like that, let's we We're always going to put a crop in the ground, so let's bet on it. We need to do this. We'll get our license, and we will just make. <laughs> Maybe we'll, we'll set up the online. We will platform. set up the cut online this platform. section out. We don't need people. Yeah, we don't hey, need people we'll getting cut, our cut cut <laughs> our idea here, because someone way smarter than all of us will get it going. Put put that <laughs> logarithm together and and uh, steal our thunder, kind of like when people stole Aaron's T-shirt designs. That would be a little bit worse than the best form of flattery for us. That would probably be a big deal. And yeah, that one kind of sucked for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tanner, back to the follow-up question there. Sure. Had you, did that give you enough time to think about that one, Aaron? What do you think is most common about the... Go right ahead. Well, I feel like I have to answer the same as probably everyone else did with work ethic. Um, but on top of that, just all around general intelligence. Because um, you can work all you want but if you don't have the brains behind it to work smarter not harder you're probably not gonna go as far as you could go and i know i'm biased but i would have to say my dad is for sure one of the best farmers in the county um and he did not grow up a lot and he overcame all of that and he's really been successful in his career so now did he also graduate from purdue no, he did not go to school. There you go. So we can have the intelligence level without having to go to school. Yes. It's just the a, smartest people I know did not go to college. It's a continued learning. It's a personality trait that that continually challenge the process, continue to be curious about how things work, why they work, and and get done the way they do. I would say exactly on the school thing. It was a completely different time, and and maybe Aaron, you can attest to this, but. I wanted to farm and my parents made sure I was going to go to school. They, uh, they wanted me to have a backup plan. They said, this is not as good as you think it is. Um, they made sure I went to school or was going to go to school or, or if I would have wanted to go to a trade school or something, they would have supported that as well. But they wanted me to go to something secondary education and they wanted me to go off the farm. They did not want me coming back to the farm right after college. They wanted me with some industry yeah. experience. Were you kind of the similar way? Yeah. So I would have to say my dad honestly was pulled out of school a lot when he was growing up to work. Um, and so I feel like that left a, an impact on him. Um, I've had several people tell me, you know, if he wouldn't have been pulled out so much, he would have been valedictorian hands down. Like he's a really smart guy. Um, so just the fact that he wasn't given the opportunity that he had to go work um, right after he graduated high school he just wanted to provide us the opportunity and made sure that we knew the importance of an education, um, not necessarily as a degree, but just that we had the opportunity um, to learn from people that were smarter than us. And would you say same thing on uh, you went to Cargill and um, then you were a DSM for a seed company? Would you say the same thing? Yep. Yeah, so my dad was to. the same as your parents. He always told us that we had to work someplace else for at least two years before we even considered, um, or he would even let us come back to the family farm, yep. um, which at the time, you hate that, but it was really good 
if only for the reason that sometimes when your dad is screaming at you, yeah. uh, you could remember that it could be worse and that you could still be selling seed and being kicked off of farms. Yeah, <laughs> I do struggle with it. I, I'm very happy that I did. I learned so much. I have so many great connections uh, because of working out in the industry. But then also I see some of the guys uh, I know around here that went right back to the farm right after high school or were even farming in high school. They knew they weren't going to college. And I know I shouldn't look at other people like stay in my lane, you know, just do what I do. But I feel like they're further ahead than me or, you know, they've they started renting ground or picking up ground and all that stuff. And it's just it's very hard not to get a little jealous of that. So there's two it, sides. Of it that. is. I totally get that feeling. Yep. But but I think us going out in the industry and getting that experience will uh, be better for us in the long run. I agree. So I think to kind of uh, put a cap on this episode, Aaron, thank you for hanging out with us. We really appreciate that. Uh, Aaron and all of us got to try the black is beautiful, the ruble strawberry sour and the Lutris pale ale, all from alluvial brewery. Uh, I think unanimously, we all found something that we enjoyed. It might not have been every single one of these as uh, as faces were comedic, but that's the way beer tasting goes. Uh, our refined oh, palates. No, there's no reason to apologize because Dave's was just as funny. <laughs> oh, no, never. <laughs> uh, but but along the lines of, of funny too, and I really thank uh, Leslie Ray Kelly of Do More Ag for joining us on our derecho episode. Uh, when she talked about the, the importance of mental health and the network that we have, I don't want to get too serious here at the end, but, but one of those is making sure that we as farmers know that other farmers are going through the same thing. So if you have, if you have a feeling, someone else is feeling it too. So reach out. So to kind of cap that off, uh, I found a couple of riddles, Aaron, that I'm oh, going to test you with. The cheesiest of the cheese. The this cheese, is, cheesiest this is of so the tanner. cheese. So Aaron, I grow in a field. Or I grow on your foot. What am I? Fungus. Fungus. Hey, that could be an answer. But the, an- the answers on here. The answer we're looking for is corn. Oh, yeah. Oh. Corn. Oh, Gosh. So, Corey, if you have a bucket full of corn from the field that has low test weight and a bucket full of corn from a field with high test weight, what can you put in both buckets to make them weigh less? A big blast of air. A hole. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. A little cheese at the end of this oh for you. Oh, my gosh. I might, Aaron, have, I might have to edit that I'm one sorry. out. I'm <laughs> sorry. You might have to edit no, that like one. I like the cheese. I uh, how, like the cheese. <laughs> how can we? Uh, how can people find you on social media? Yeah, so I am Ern Holbert, Aaron without the I on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Um, Aaron Holbert on YouTube and Heart of the Midwest on Facebook. I think that's all of them. And, yeah. And your Heart of the Midwest is that? Does that have a website too? Oh yeah. So sorry. Right. Yeah, it's actually undergoing maintenance right now. It's Heart of the Midwest Shop dot com, and it will be going back to just Heart of the Midwest dot com here in like three or four weeks. Cool. Well, we appreciate you joining us. Um, yeah, it was a little bit of a challenge getting connected there for a while, but I'm really glad that I, that we kept up with it. And Persistence is a trait that yeah. might be of the most successful farmers. Hopefully I was like the best, <laughs> nicest DM that she, <laughs> she has gotten. So. Oh, for sure. <laughs> oh, uh, for thank sure. you so much for asking me. I'm so sorry again that you got put in the do not read part of my inbox. <laughs> All right, listeners, you know what to do. If you have somebody that wants to be a part of a Farm for Fun show, let us know, farmforprofitllc at gmail.com. Or if you have other topics that you want us to run over, make sure you let us know. That's how you find us on social media. And, Corey, why don't you send us out? Crack a beer, mix a drink. You deserve it. Cheers. (laughs) Remember, if you aren't farming for profit, you won't be farming for long.